Um, it potentially could be, so if you don't know that I'm whispering dark deeds and not in your presence, that may or may not, depending on your beliefs, affect your life. You could blame bad things happening in your life to someone <coughs> casting spells at you over in the corner, or you can choose to believe that bad things are happening to you because you've been a bad person, or just because of chaos theory. Whatever is your belief system basically defines it. Whether or not you whispering dark things in the corner about me actually affects me is what I believe, and it's what you believe that matters. Does, does this belief thing apply to the laws as a whole? The is scary it's part true? is that it's what you believe is made true. So if you believe that by whispering dark things in the corner about me, you make it true because you believe it, and enough people do, then it becomes true. So then, what if you start believing that <coughs> you, what if you start like ha trying to gain complete control of the belief that you control your own outcome by believing whatever you want? There's actually a movie called The Secret, it's also a book, very best-selling. Can we not talk about that? That Wait, actually about? Ask explains question. exactly what you just said, basically. Wait, explains what? It's um, a terrible movie in books. We're not getting, we're Regardless not of an opinion, the book is a constitutional theory. Um, the theory states that by knowing that you control your life and actively trying to influence it with intent, you, by believing that your oh, own this intent... Is yes, this is the secret. This is the secret. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what I said. Oh, so by believing that your intent has power, your intent has power. So that's going back to that belief. Simply alone is powerful. But does that mean that if someone disbelieves in some of these laws of magic and that someone else... Then they will choose to believe that it is something else that is causing their misery. Oh. So, you see what I'm saying? It's a double entendre. It's a catch-22. There is no truth. Because if you believe that you're hurting me with your words, I can choose to believe that it's you, or I can choose to believe that it's Cthulhu that's hurting me. I, whatever I believe is irrelevant. So, there is no proof. Yeah, the there is no able way to prove anything. Because it is all. Isn't the secret also like that same idea that they believe in chaos magic? You can choose what to believe and they believe in it. In a smaller sense, um, the secret is only relevant to my own life. Chaos magic is taking right, right, the power right. of intent and applying it to I'm going to cause chaos everywhere yeah. because I believe that I can. So. Which seems like, a, if not necessarily better than someone more respectable, it's, it's all based on intent. Alright, now that we have that, now that we've finished off with that, uh, ceremonial magic, oh. Yeah. oh. Which is, um, it seems like you're implying that believing positively, like, not positive as in a good, but positive in the sense of, yes, something that, Appropriate that actually that. does cause something to happen, but believing negatively doesn't make something not happen, it just makes you come up with a different explanation for it. Believing positively in something is going to happen, uh, by the concept of the secret, says that you are influencing that thing to make itself happen. But believing negatively that something is not going to happen would basically be giving the same basis, but it's not as powerful. So if I say that I believe I'm not going to break my arm in the next four years, that's not as powerful as saying that I'm going to be careful in the next four years. Or, not, or it's not as powerful as someone else believing. All right, this is a big thing right here. You've had no. It's important, and it's something we'll come back to. It's yeah. It's been a thing in this part actually. <laughs> All right. This is one of the least tangible conversations I've ever had. So, let's talk about how a practitioner would really go about doing this. Um, an example I have comes from black magic and Eliphas Levi says that if you're going to evoke evil with your circle, <clears throat> your circle should be drawn with the point of a magic sword, the inner circle should be made of strips of lambs or kid skin, nailed down with the four nails from the coffin of an executed criminal, inside this is a triangle with candles made of human fat to left and right, set in black wooden candlesticks and served with bourbon. Along the outer edge of the circle, four objects are placed. A head of the black cat, which has fed on human flesh for five days. A bat, which has been drowned in blood. The horns of a goat, which has had intercourse with a girl. And the skull of a parasite. 
The magician wears a seamless black robe without sleeves and a cap of lead engraved with the symbols of Venus, Saturn, and the moon. Ceremonial magic is very difficult to do because of the level of bullshit you have to go through in order to set this shit up. poisoning and parasite. Yeah. Can you just believe that it requires this bullshit? That's an overarching belief. We'll get to that. He believes yeah. it. Isn't that? You just want to break the system. Well, isn't the point of all this bullshit to sort of get to invoke a law of association? To sort of like get you to start thinking about all of these things and their meaning in the world. So How could any demon possibly be powerful enough to justify going through this Because it's black magic and very demons can do some terrible shit. Very, very good. What about his question? Um, what was his question? Oh, right, law of cessation. But, I mean, that's what it seems like to me. Like, that is one way to view it. That is not the way everyone views it, but that is certainly a way that people view it. Um, the Satanic Bible talks about basically going through rituals as a way, uh, they call it psychodrama. So it's basically that. They're like, you're doing this because it will bring out what I want to happen in me. So then, after you've done it a couple times and understood the feelings, do you not need that bullshit anymore? No. It depends. Certain people will probably be like, well, that works, and now that I understand this thing, I can go about doing my business, and I don't need to, you know, make a circle out of whatever, and, like, get gemstones, and, you know. Other people are going to experience it in such a way, and this is, um, you know, kind of like questions of religious experiences, that it works through that system. So then you have to keep using the system. Other people will just say, this is the system, and the system works in a certain way. It's not really the law of cessation, it's actually the system. And depending on your opinion, you might think that's naive or something else. I saw it. Lesser, like, why doesn't anyone evoke us? 
Why not any less? Are, are you sure they don't? Yeah. Depending on. Well, well, I, I, I thought of that, and it might be, you know, it might be just. I have sort of an explanation. For that. I have one idea. But, well, hold on. I saw your hand. You haven't talked to me. Yeah, well, I was wondering if, if, uh, if we're just not important enough. So maybe after we die, <laughs> well, yeah, because you can you can definitely evoke invoke spirits. Um, there are lots of systems where people will invoke their ancestors, and they will be possessed by their ancestors. Yeah, how would you that? Yeah. Well, we can invoke we both like each other. There's probably some extent. way. Actually, but, uh, oh, I that to but I guess the. The logical conclusion from this, if nothing lesser than us is invoking or evoking us, then that would mean that we are the least possible beings that have the ability to invoke. Well, there's also the possibility that it's just something that we bring up experientially as something that we don't understand as a sort of interaction by these beings. There's also... There's, there's plenty of other explanations. Not the only one. There's also another explanation within the um, sort of cohesion of the system, which is... The reason that magicians can do this sort of stuff is because they are made in the image of God. God has the ability to exert his will over all of reality. Humans made in the image of God have, to a much lesser extent, the ability to exert their will over reality. So we can do stuff like this, we do it in a certain sort of way, because we were made in the image of God. That makes a lot of sense. Magic is very Christian, oh, that's, that's... which is really strange. Um, I was, I was thinking a sort of uh, related to that, and I was thinking earlier when we were talking about true names, that like, you know, in a sense, like, we have, like, a legal name, we have social security numbers by which society sort of keeps track of and puts its will on us, which I don't know if that's magical, but there's certainly, you know, necessarily something metaphysical about associating beings and symbols. Yeah. Something that we do a lot, I think. Yes. It seems to me that at any given time, most, if not all, the laws are in effect in order for in order for something to happen. Yeah, I'd say there are certain cases where one law would be used. Like if you're summoning a demon in order to gain knowledge, you probably don't need to use the law of contagion. Yeah. Because the law of contagion is generally used to apply the essence of a person to a situation. But if you're summoning a demon to go beat the shit out of some bully and you're in high school or whatever, yeah. then you want a strand of the bully's hair so you can be like, all right, listen, look at this. See this? Go get him. I mean, okay, well, I in more respectful terms, but essentially that. Uh, but yes, in most cases, the law, the laws of magic are, like, all work. So could you, could an entity, like, decide not to be woken and be like, oh, well, there's this implication going on over there. I think I'm going to pass on that. No. Well, maybe. Yeah. No, oh certainly they can. So um, that, that's kind of a case if you don't do it right. So, like, if you set up your summoning circle fine and you set up the invocation, or uh, the, the solemn triangle fine, but you don't have any incense, then it's going to be like, why the hell would I go there? What are they offering me? They clearly don't know what they're doing. They're supposed to burn at least something kind of like Saturn or at least something kind of like this. Um, the other part, and this is a question that I'm surprised hasn't been asked yet, is why the hell would a demon do any of this stuff for us? Well, yes, because you know their names, you have power Yeah, but it's not, it's not as absolute as we think it is. I feel like this is like their only like Sort of. Like they have tea the on Sundays. There was a... <laughs> When I when I was preparing, I was looking at uh, different accounts to like go over, and one of them, someone asked a demon how many times they were instantiated at the present moment. He was like, twelve times, one in Taiwan, one in China, four in the United States, three in England. And like, it's like, wow, <laughs> all right. And was apparently that he got summoned. Demon was being summoned twelve times. It seemed. Yeah, and he oh. gets invoked about a hundred. 1,083 times a day, or something. And that, that's what I remember the account saying. Uh, a lot of you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't know what things are using this system without obviously using this system, because magic gets diluted really hard. But, the question is, why would a demon 
do anything for you? Why would the demon go and beat up your roommate for you? Or, 